I've been working on my monthly budget and finally things look the way that I want them to. Making formatting decisions such as what columns to include, what text to include, and the text style and size can be difficult. I've already listed all my bills, but now I need to include my income information so I can do a couple of calculations. Calculating and analyzing numerical information is really what Excel is intended to be used for. You can use it at home to create budgets like this one, or in the workplace to create complex spreadsheets that keep track of company finances, inventory, and more. To be able to use Excel to accomplish these tasks, it's important that you understand formulas. In school, you used formulas to calculate math problems like 2 plus 2 equals 4 or 20% off of $100. Microsoft Excel uses these same formulas to perform spreadsheet calculations. A formula is an equation that performs a calculation using values in the worksheets. You're probably used to seeing equations like 2 plus 2 with an equal sign after it, but in Excel, Every formula starts with the equal sign. This may be a little confusing, but I promise it will make sense. In C3, you can see I have my net pay of $1,500 listed, and in C4, the money I made from my extra job that month. Let's say I want to add those two numbers together so the total income for the month appears in C5. Let's select cell C5, since that is where I want the total income for January to appear. Since Excel formulas all begin with an equal sign, use your keyboard to insert an equal sign in the cell. As you insert the equal sign, notice how the formula bar changes. You see, entering the equal sign makes the formula bar active. You can now see the cancel icon, which removes information from the formula bar, the enter icon, which will accept what you type, and the function icon that provides you with some other mathematical options. Let's go back to C5 and finish our formula. We want to add my $1,500 and $200, so we'll just type the first number and then use the keyboard to insert the addition sign and now type the second number. The addition sign lets Excel know that an add operation is to be performed. Okay, now that I have my formula entered in the cell, I can press the enter key on my keyboard or click the enter command on the formula bar. And now I can see that Excel added 1500 and 200 and placed the answer in cell C5 where I typed the formula. Another way you can create formulas is by using cell references. Instead of typing equals 1500 plus 200 in cell C5 to calculate my total income that month, I can use a cell reference in the formula. A cell reference is when you use a cell address in a formula and refer to that specific cell by name. For example, the cell address of this cell is C3. This cell is where column C and row 3 intersect. Now, let's write a formula using cell references. Select the cell where you want the answer to appear. Type the equal sign to let Excel know that we're writing a formula. Type the cell number that contains the first number to be added. And then type the addition sign. Now type the cell number that contains the second number to be added. Press Enter on your keyboard or click the Enter button on the formula bar. So you're probably wondering why we might want to use cell references. It doesn't seem any easier to type the cell address rather than the numbers, does it? 
Well, let's say that I realized I entered my net pay incorrectly. All I have to do is change the numbers in cell C3. And as I change it, my total income in cell D5 automatically changes. If I change the amount in C3, I would not see a change in C5 because I didn't use a cell reference, but instead typed the numbers in the formula. Cell references are especially important to know about when working with columns that contain many numbers that change regularly. As you've probably noticed in most Microsoft Office applications, there is usually more than one way to accomplish a task. In this formula, I typed in the cell reference as I wrote the formula, but you can also use the points and click method to select cells so that you don't have to type the cell references each time. Let's see how the point and click method works while creating a simple subtraction formula. I've entered the total amount of my January expenses in C29. Now to calculate how much money I have after paying all my January bills, I just need to write a formula in C30 that subtracts my January expenses from my January income. So we'll select the cell where we want the answer to appear and then insert the equal sign. Now, all I need to do is left click the first cell that is included in the formula. The border of the cell changes to the marching ants and the cell reference C5 appears in the formula here. You can see the cursor is in C30, so now I can enter the subtraction sign to let Excel know that a subtraction operation needs to be performed. Now, just left click the next cell in the formula. Since we want to subtract our January expenses, we'll select C29. Now what appears in my formula? If we have more cells to subtract, we would just repeat these steps until the formula is complete. I'm ready to click enter. And now the formula shows me how much money I have remaining after paying all my bills. You'll find the point and click method of selecting cells is really helpful because often it's just easier and faster to use the mouse instead of the keyboard. We've created formulas using the addition and subtraction signs, but you can also use the multiplication and division signs in your formulas. All four of these mathematical signs or symbols are called operators because they tell Excel what type of mathematical operation needs to be performed. You need to know this term because if you have to use the Excel help tool, this is how it refers to these mathematical signs. Let's really quickly look at how you can create a simple multiplication formula. I don't really need to use multiplication for my basic budget, but let's just say I wanted to figure out how much money I spend on rent a year. I can see I spend $350 a month on rent. So let's just scroll down somewhere empty down here and just type this formula. We'll click the cell where we want the formula and answer to appear and insert the equal sign. I can left click C9 to select the amount of my monthly rent and I'll see the cell reference appear in my formula. Now I'll insert the multiplication operator. Now you probably remember an X being used as a multiplication symbol in school but in Excel, the asterisk is used as a multiplication operator. Now the asterisk looks like a little star. To insert it, press the shift key and then the number 8 on your keyboard. I'll type the number 12 since there are 12 months in a year and press the enter key. Wow, that's a lot of money on rent over the year. 
You can create formulas using division as well. In Excel, you'll need to use the forward slash key for the division operator. This formula calculates how much I'm paying per day to live in my apartment over the course of the year. I don't really need either of these for my budget, but I thought it would be good for you to see how all the operators work in simple formulas. The best way to learn how formulas work is to practice them yourself. Use this workbook for practice or open a new blank workbook and enter numbers to give various formulas a try.